Hi guys, I'm Alicia Sokol. I'm the owner of Bar 3 14th Street in Washington, DC. This is Good Moves with Well and Good, and I'm bringing you a workout today that's focused on the core. It's low impact, there are going to be modifications, and this is especially good if you are expecting, because we're not going to do any deep twisting, no laying on the back, and we're really going to protect and strengthen our abs. You need um, really nothing but a mat. If you've got a set of weights or a squishy ball like this one, you can use those, but I'm gonna show you how to do the workout without those things at all. All right, let's get started. Start with your feet hip distance parallel, soften behind your knees, level your pelvis, draw your abs in, let your shoulders roll away from your ears, take a big breath, bring your hands together, and then sink down, long spine, weight in your heels. Roll up slowly. The idea here is to bring oxygen into your body, to bring movement to your spine, and to begin to notice what you're feeling. Take big inhales, make your exhale just a little longer. We'll take one more like this. That's it, and then stand all the way up, and we're gonna take a nice, slow sumo squat. So on a two count, you're gonna drop your seat back, and then as you lift, roll one shoulder. Gentle, heels heavy, knees right over the ankles. Tailbone reaches back. You're only sinking as low as you can go for your knees and your low back. Let's make this a little bit bigger with the shoulder. Maybe you start to look to the side. Should feel really gentle. Gentle twist. And then eventually, we're gonna start to take the arm a little bit bigger. So it's like you're swimming backward. Two counts down, lift and reach. Lubricating your shoulder joint, loosening your neck. That's it, make it feel gentle. Let's take one more right here, and then we'll take it a little faster. Nice and easy. That's it, feel your breath. Maybe put your hand on your heart. Feel your heart beating. Good. I'm gonna give you an option here to take some arms. You're gonna lift an imaginary box. You're gonna take your box, set it on the shelf. Okay, your shelf can be in front of you, it can be a little higher. You decide what works for your shoulders, your neck. You can send your feet a little wider. If you're expecting, you may wanna create a little space for your baby. You'll find that if you are expecting, if your heart rate comes up a little faster, the reason for that is you have double the volume of blood in your body. So if your heart is pounding here, that's normal. Just slow it back down if you need to, if you feel dizzy at all. Let's take just a couple more. And then we're gonna turn to the side and ground ourselves. Last four, three, big exhale at the top, two more. Last one, turn to the side and find a crescent lunge. Plant your foot forward and hold. Right away, bring your arms down if you have any tension in your neck or shoulders. So I want you to notice that my feet are hip distance in parallel. Squeeze your inner thighs together, root down through your heel. Square your hips, lift tall through the crown of your head, and notice that this is a powerful pose even though we're still. Start to hinge your heart forward, really putting weight in your front foot, and then we're gonna bend the back knee, find a little flow. Bend for two, and then reach. You're only bending your knee as much as you can to open through your hip flexor and start to prepare your lower body for the work we're gonna do today. Okay, if you feel a lot of pain there, make it a soft bend and then really focus on the reach. If your knees feel healthy, you can bend the knees a lot more. But notice my front knee is not moving at all. It's fixed in space, almost like I've stepped into a ski boot. Okay, let's take just a couple more here. Big reach. Use your breath to push you forward. On this last one, reach your fingers forward, dig your heel and hold. One more breath right here. And then we're gonna turn to the other side and take the same series. Crescent lunge side two, hold. Push into your heel, stack your knee over your ankle. Hips are square, low belly firms. Shoulders relax and then hinge forward. And we'll find the same flow. Bend your back knee, find a carousel horse. Exhale, reach. This side might feel different than side one, so be open to finding a different adaptation. Maybe staying higher, 
or maybe you have a little more space here to go lower. Again, use your breath. Exhale as you reach. That's it. Find length through your spine. From your fingers to your heel. Notice what's happening in your body. I feel a little heat through the glute. Feel my heart rate coming up a little bit. Let's take just two more. And then we'll hold, reaching long. Reach, look down at your heel, take one big breath. And then we're gonna come down to the floor. Okay, so if you've got props, I'm gonna show you a way to use them. We're coming to diamonds. So come on down to your side. Elbow comes just underneath your shoulder. Bring your knees together, bring your feet together. And then lift your feet up so that your feet, your hips and your shoulders are in a line. Open your top knee, hold. Okay, so notice there's length through the side of your body and you're lifting up, your collarbones are wide. You wanna avoid shrinking down. Okay, from here, we're gonna let the top knee come down and then lift. I like to put my hand right on my hip. This is where you're gonna feel the work. This is your glute need and it's really important to strengthen these muscles right, because they stabilize your pelvis. So whether you're a walker or a runner, well, actually we're all walkers, right? You need stable hips. This is gonna help you functionally, right? Really important. Okay, so if you're expecting, this is a safe move to do all the way through the end of your pregnancy. No pressure on the baby. If you have a squishy ball, you can use it underneath your rib cage. This gives a little more support for your low back if you need that, okay? You also have the option to come on down and just lay down, use your head, or use your hand kind of like uh, a pillow, that works too, where you can lay all the way down, just letting your head come down. Okay, either way, you're feeling the work right here. Okay, let's take just a couple more right here. Last two, feet stay together. Last one, and then lift and hold. Okay, take a little tap. Tap the knee back. Okay, so if you were at my studio here in Washington, D.C., I would probably come around and put my hand right on your thigh. Put my heavy hand there and give you just a little pressure, a little something to push against. Okay, you can put your own hand there. Create a little extra work for yourself. I know you turned this on today to challenge yourself, so go ahead and make it happen. That's it. A few more and then we're gonna flip around, do side two. Four more. Three, two, hold. Okay, option to find a uh, um, side plank. Okay, so just let your arm come up. You can let your hip come up. Hold it here for just a moment. Maybe even let the leg come up. See how that feels. Take one big breath in your modified side plank. Ooh, go ahead, come down. And let's flip around and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So now you know exactly what to expect. Elbow under your shoulder, knees together, feet together, toes together. Lift your feet, lift your knee, firm your belly in and hold. Hips stacked, collarbones wide. Let's find two counts. Let the knee come down and then lift. Okay, this might turn on right away for you. I always feel this right away. Okay, and I'll tell you a little secret. This is my least favorite bar three posture. And the reason is it's really hard for me. Okay, but we should not shy away from things that are hard. Right, we can do things that are difficult and we can survive. Right, you are building skills for yourself, a visceral connection between mind and body that says, hey, it can be hard and I can stay here. I'm gonna be okay. Let's take just two more here. And on this last one, you're gonna lift up. Ooh, I feel the shakes. And you're gonna hold. Okay, let's find little taps back. Back, again, you can use your hand to push down, create that resistance. That's it. Can you lift up out of your spine a little more? Can you firm your core in a little more? I think you can. Good, we're doing this together. What can you relax? Can you relax your face, your jaw, maybe close your eyes and allow your attention to go inward? I know it burns. I also know it's almost done. We're gonna go into our modified side plank in just a moment. Let's take four more. That's it, three more. Last two. Okay, hold. Option to let the leg come down. Lift up, lift your hip if you wish. And then maybe try lifting the top leg. Can you lengthen through your fingers, through your foot? Pull your hip and your rib cage away from the mat. Take one more big breath. Ooh, go ahead and come on down. Okay, let's just sit up real quick and we'll cross our legs. We're gonna inhale, lift up tall. 
and then exhale, find a little twist. Inhale, lift, and a little twist, okay? So if you're expecting, you know, that deep twisting, it's not gonna feel good for you. So you're gonna take this really gently. Ooh, one more here, each side. Let your breath flow. Here's your last one. And then we're gonna come to all fours. So bring your hands right underneath your shoulders. Bring your knees right underneath your hips. Eyes look right between your hands and hold. Okay, we're gonna start to alternate lifting the heel to the sky. Okay, just one at a time. Your job here is to keep your hips level, keep your elbows soft, eyes look down, and your breath is flowing. Now, you're gonna feel your weight want to shift side to side as you lift a knee. Your job is to stay centered and think of hugging your armpits in a little bit. Okay, your spine is in a neutral posture, which means that you're not sticking your butt up into the air. You're not tucking your tailbone under. Your spine has a natural S shape, and we're preserving that S shape. So there should be just a little scoop at the small of your back. Now, you should feel the base of the seat as you lift one leg, and then as you pull the knee down, feel the core muscles. Really slow this down so you can feel your muscles working. Okay, options. You can come to your fists if you're feeling any wrist tension. You can also come down to your forearms and work here. Okay, and if being on the floor, this isn't your jam today, you are welcome to come to a waist high surface, like a kitchen um, counter or a chair, and you can take the same work right here. Okay, upright. Now again, this is a safe move to do in all phases of a pregnancy. So even if you're in that 40th week, you can do this safely. Just notice any tension in your low back and give yourself breaks. Okay, we've got just a couple more here. That's it. Notice if one side is connecting faster or contracting a little more than the other. Stay with your body and your breath. Sometimes when we do things that are repetitive, the mind wants to wander. I want you to keep your mind right here. Give yourself that gift. Okay, lift one leg. Squeeze the heel in towards your seat and just find a little tap. Lift, lift, that's it. Okay, so your eyes are looking down. Resist the urge to look back behind you or to look up. That's gonna put pressure on your neck. So think of really elongating your neck. If you wanna create a little controlled chaos, take the opposite hand and just place it at your low back. Okay, with your fingers spread wide, you should be able to feel the contraction of your glutes. Take four more here. Last three. Last two. All right, let's switch that. Okay, take the other leg up. Ooh, that's it. Okay, find that tap again. Okay, you can flex your heel if you'd like. You can point your toe. It's up to you. Wherever you are, squeeze your heel in towards your seat and feel the base of your seat working. Now, if you want to take that option for a little control chaos, take your hand. Place it at your low back. Notice that nice S shape, that nice neutral spine. That's gonna help protect your back. And if your fingers are extended, you can feel the contraction at the top of your glutes. Yeah, sometimes it's satisfying to have that tactile reminder, right, that your body's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It was made to do this. Let's take a few more here. Breathing big, pushing into your hand, your shin, Last four, three, two, go ahead, bring your hands down, bring your knee down, and we'll go right back to where we started. So just alternate, lift, that's it. Can you pure your breath? Inhale to lift, exhale, contract your abs. Good, this is a functional motion. And this is actually sort of like a plank. We're using the muscles of our upper body, we're using the muscles of our lower body, and we're training them to work together. Great functional strength that will help you do all the things in your life you like to do. Even the ones that are not very glamorous, right? Pushing yourself up out of bed, catching yourself when you fall, things that probably you don't think about every day that matter. Okay, let's take one more on each side. You're almost there. All right, here's your last one. All right, go ahead and come on up and let's roll our wrists out. All right, that's kind of hard on the wrist. So just shake them out. You can shake your head, roll your wrists a little bit, and then we're gonna end seated, okay? So if you've got a ball, 
I'm gonna show you how to do this with the ball. You're gonna sit up nice and tall, heavy through your seat, relax your shoulders, and then hinge yourself back. You can bring your ball to your heart. If you don't have a ball, you can use weights, a can, you can use a water bottle. Relax your shoulders, and we're gonna take some bar three Russian twists. So you're gonna take the ball to one side, and keeping your shoulders and your spine stable, you're gonna bring it to the other side. So think of leaving your core still and just bringing the ball or the weights or the water bottle, whatever it is, side to side. That's it. You should feel your obliques turning on. If you feel a little pinching in your hip flexors, you're welcome to lengthen your legs. Maybe cross your ankles. See how that feels. I'm gonna give you a side view so you can see that I'm leaning back just a little bit. But if you're feeling this in your back, you can sit up a little taller. That's it. Breathe into it, knowing that if you breathe a little more deeply, you're likely to contract your abs in a more meaningful way. Okay, we had just two more like this. I'll face you one more time. We're coming to the end of our time together. We'll take a quick stretch. Last one each side. Ooh, that's it. All right, go ahead and put the prop down if you have a prop. We're just gonna cross our legs. Okay, sit up nice and tall. Hands on the top of your thighs. Take a big circle. This should feel really good. Go one direction. Working out all the kinks in your low back. That's it. Move your breath through your body and then rotate the other way. Nice and easy. Beautiful. And then stack your shoulders right over your hips. And we'll find lateral flexion of our spine. Reach to the side and then to the other side. Seat is heavy. It's like you're tracing the edges of a rainbow. You gotta endure a little rain to get the rainbow. Let's take just two more here. And then we'll end seated. Come right back to center. Inhale, lift your arms up, look at your fingers. Exhale, draw the ground forward. One more time, inhale your arms up. Bring your palms together and then just bring your thumbs to your heart. Lift tall. Thank you very much. I hope you feel great. I'm Alicia Sokol with Bar 3 14th Street in Washington, D.C. This has been Good Moves with Well and Good. For more workouts just like this one, be sure to subscribe to Well and Good. You can find out more about Bar 3 at bar3.com. We hope to see you again soon. Thank you.